Coming to you with words and teaching that will change your life forever. All things that you will ever need in your life, they're wrapped up in the Word. Go for the Word. You need to understand this thing. And when you get a hold of it, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. The Bible says in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Can you shout amen? I said the course that I must follow. In the name of Jesus, prosperity is mine. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Pastor Chris, we're hearing. Praise God. Now, remember, we are God's reproduction. I said we are God's reproduction. In other words, we are his offspring. God gave birth to us. Now that's not the same for everybody in the world. He didn't give birth to everybody in the world. He created everybody. But he gave birth to some. To be born of God, you have to be born again. You see, from the day you received Christ into your life, you started a new journey. A journey that was predestinated to be a journey of success, prosperity, victory, health, and every good thing that God has given to us in Christ Jesus. That's the journey you started when you were born again. Now, even though the experience of many people is not one of victory, prosperity, success, health, it doesn't invalidate the Word of God because you don't know what those people really believe. You don't know. You know, when things happen, people say, well, that guy was a Christian and that thing happened to him. Why? I thought he was a Christian. Why? It shouldn't happen to Christians. Well, you don't know what he believes. You don't know what he's been saying. You don't know what he's used his mouth to establish in his life. And the Bible says, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. He says, thou art taken captive with the words of thy mouth. You are snared with the words of your mouth. You put yourself in a danger through the words of your mouth. You create your own dangers. You create your own captivity. But some people don't realize how important that is in the kingdom of God. That's why the Bible says that after you're born again, you've got to renew your thinking. You have to change your way of thinking. You have to renew your mind. It's important. You know, I was sharing with you several weeks ago on three kinds of what? Knowledge. Knowledge and three kinds of wisdom. Getting the right mindset. He said he was taking us from the domain of disobedience, the realm of disobedience, to the phronesis of the righteous, the mindset of the righteous. 
The righteous have a way of thinking. They have a way of thinking. And so God said to us in Romans, the 12th chapter, when you read from verse 1 into verse 2, he tells us that we should renew our thinking. Renew our minds. And the only way we renew our minds is through the Word of God. We exchange our thoughts for His thoughts. We used to think defeated, poor, sick, beggarly. And we, we give up those thoughts of defeat. We give up those thoughts of negativism. We give up those thoughts of poverty. Thoughts of weakness. We give them up. And receive his new thoughts of victory. His new thoughts of faith and strength. Hallelujah. Now that's very important. Okay, what are we beginning to share on from tonight? I'll tell you when I read the scripture where we're taking it from. All right? You ready? I, I think I kind of mentioned it. Maybe it was on Monday or so. Monday morning, were you here when we prayed? Yes. Was it good? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. When I read this, you know, I, I think, Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth. I don't know how you're singing your own. I like singing it faster. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till the work on earth is done. It's a good song, thanking God for giving us His Son, Jesus, who brought us out of darkness and gave us a new life, made us new creations. We're so grateful for that, and we're thanking Him also in that song for leaving the Holy Spirit here till the work on earth is done. Because without Him, we couldn't have won. But with Him, we have won. Amen. Amen. Say, we have won. Say, I can see already. We have won. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Aluta continua. <laughs> Victoria Asata. No. No. No, a thousand times no. The struggle is over. The Bible says, those who have entered into his rest have ceased from their struggles. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, hello, how are you? They say, the struggle continues. No, I'm not struggling anymore. It's over. Hallelujah, it's over. Praise God. Second Timothy chapter number four, and I'm reading from verse seven. Oh, I like it. He said, I have fought a good fight. Have you seen it in your Bible? <laughs> you see, maybe we should read it in the right context so we can understand it, all right? Now, you see here, Paul the Apostle is um, rounding off his ministry. He's winding up, and uh, he writes this letter to a young man, Timothy. This is his second letter to the young man, to the young pastor of the church of Ephesus. All right, we're reading from verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. He says, preach the word. He's telling the young man. He says, preach the word. Because you see, he's through now. 
For he tells that man, he says, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own laws shall they heap to themselves, teachers have each in ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Hallelujah. For I am now ready to be offered. In other words, he says, I'm ready to be poured out as a libation. Ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. You see that? He knew the end had come. He was ready to die. He said, the, the time of my departure is at hand. Then he says, I have fought a good fight. How many people do you know who, as the round of their lives, can say, the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. Why will a man at 70 say, I don't want to die because he ain't through yet. See? At 80, they even want to be healed. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I mean, if you're going to die, don't die sick. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. You don't have to die sick. But, but the, the thought that comes to my mind is, how many people can say, it's about time. Even if they have 10 years left and they say, well, I've got 10 years left. I've lived 70 years already. Um, you know, I, I fought a good fight. How many can look back at their lives and say, I fought a good fight? I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. I fought a good fight. Let me tell you what. When I was through with my secondary school and um, I looked at what I'd done in the gospel. You know what I said? I said, I fought a good fight. That's what I said. I said, I fought a good fight. I was excited in my spirit. I said, I fought a good fight. Then I went into the university. When I was through, I knew, I, because I've gone through many schools and preached, and I've I done a lot of things. And I took time to take stock. Have I left any stone unturned? I knew what I was asked to do. I'd done it. Again, I said, I have fought a good fight. I finished here. I fought a good fight. I was ready to go. If I hadn't finished, I tell you, I would have organized programs, outreaches back into the universities. I would have gone back in there. But I was through. I had fought a good fight. Hallelujah. And I was excited. I had fought a good fight. I knew I was done. It matters whether or not you complete your work. See, if you don't know what you're asked to do, you can't tell whether or not you're through. You wouldn't even know if you've done anything that you were asked to do if you don't know what you were asked to do. But the man said, I have fought a good fight. He said it was a good fight. I fought. Look. Are you there? All right. He says, I have fought a good fight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, this is Paul writing. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. In other words, I've run the race. I've run the race. I've finished my course. Then he said, I have kept the faith. I've remained true to the gospel. I've kept the faith. 
Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Praise God. Now, you don't have to wait till you're about to die to know you for the good fight. Just like what I, what I told you about success. I said success is measured at different levels of life. You can tell you're a success at different levels. And so you heap success upon success. The same thing with this. I just told you. At different levels, when I said, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I fully enjoy my school days. Doing what? Preaching the gospel in a most radical way. I preached it, I preached it, I preached it. Preached it. Healed the sick and cast out devils. Shook up the whole place. Until I collided with the authorities. Boy, I fought a good fight. When I got into the university, the same thing. The same thing. The same thing. <laughs> I fought a good fight. Hallelujah. Fought a good fight. Somebody says, I'm fighting for my political career. You failed already. <laughs> you don't fight for your political career. You fight for the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's not a good fight. <laughs> That's not a good fight. He said, fight. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. I want you all to read that to me. First Timothy. Now listen, Paul, he's, Paul, Paul said, I fought a good fight. What about the rest of us? Are we supposed to be so grateful to God that Paul has fought for us? No, he didn't fight for us. First Timothy chapter 6. Have you seen it? Verse 12. What does it say? Again, again. Oh, he tells us what the good fight is. Fight the good fight of faith. So, that fight is a good fight, and it is the fight of faith. And who's to fight it? You. He didn't say, God's going to fight. You know, some people say, the battle is the Lord's. Say, God, the battle is the Lord's, but it's over. Amen. Now we have a fight, and this fight is not against demons. Somebody said, I've been fighting demons all night long. You were in the wrong fight. <laughs> you were in the wrong fight. How could you be fighting demons all night long? Well, they've been pressing me on my chest. Well, because you were in the wrong fight. Why were they pressing you? Because you were in the wrong fight. He didn't tell us to fight the demons. Somebody said, what about if they're fighting you? Don't fight them. You mean they fight you to death? No, don't fight them. If you don't fight them, there will be no fight. <laughs> so what are you going to do when the demons attack you? Oh, simple. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight of faith. Look at it. He says, fight. He didn't say, pray. He said, fight. Look at it. The first word of that 12th verse. What does it say? Fight. Fight, fight the good fight. He says it's a good one. Thank God. It's a good fight of faith. All right, so he says, fight the good fight of faith. Did he tell you to lay hold on what? <laughs> ah, that tells you how to fight the good fight of faith. Look at it. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Then he tells you, lay hold. Lay hold on the car. No. Lay hold on that house. 
No. Lay hold on your wife. No. He said what? Lay hold. On. Can you see it and a lie? No, no, no. Oh, come on here. Can you see it and a lie? Have you seen it and a lie? Come on. Have you seen it and a lie? Some are saying yes and some are saying no. Those who are saying yes, I know why you're saying yes. And those who are saying no, I also know why you're saying no. Those who are saying yes are saying yes because they have seen eternal life in the spirit. Am I right? And Jesus is life. Amen? Amen. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> and those who are saying no are saying, well, I haven't seen eternal life with my optical eyes. And you are right. So the question is, have you seen eternal life with your optical eyes? No. Have you ever looked around to find it? No. How are you going to lay hold on what you haven't seen then? Faith! He says, take a hold of eternal life. Where is it? What is the good confession? It means speaking the same thing in consent with God. We just re-echo what God has said. We say it again. Look at Jesus' confession. Listen, Jesus, listen, Jesus did not live as God. He lived as a man. He lived as a man. Never forget that. When Jesus came here, he was born as a man. He lived as a man. He did not live here as God. Even though he was God, he lived as a man. His confessions were the confessions of a man. The confessions of the second Adam. Hear him. I and my father are one. Can you say that? Can a man say that? Emphatically, yes. He was showing us what we could be. And now we have become. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is, how could a man say, I am the life? <laughs> Tell somebody, our confessions rule us. That's a fact. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. Inherent life. He didn't need any more life supply. He had life. Does that occur to you? That he has put life in us? Not many have understood that. We don't know. Uh, listen, we, we haven't found out what we really are. The world still dictates the circumstances of our lives, and that's wrong. We haven't found out who we really are, our true image in God. Most of us have never delved into that arena. We are still dabbling, you know, just moving around, almost grubbing in the dark. Because we haven't taken the word of God as it is. It's an identity crisis. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Now he tells you, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on your healing. 
lay hold on your health lay hold on your prosperity lay hold you see these are things you don't see he didn't say lay hold on that car uh -uh. Mm -mm. not the car you're already seeing not your friend's car that's going to say ah, lay hold on it no 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 it's that which you see in your heart and you take a hold of that which is in your heart the kingdom of God has been set up in our hearts I told you that on Sunday the kingdom is in our hearts your greatness is in your heart don't think weak don't think defeated don't think poor he's given us a new way of thinking can you live above the economy can you live above the sense realm he says fight the good fight of faith what can you see have you seen eternal life yes eternal life is real and you see that with your spirit oh the Bible says he was in the world the world was made by him and the world didn't recognize him but as many as received him to them he gave the power to become the sons of God let me tell you something this is so important he says the word the word he says in the beginning was the word the word the logos of God in the beginning was the logos the logos is God's revelation is God's word that has brought us revelation of the divine personality of God he says in the beginning was the logos of God the word was with God the word was himself God he says all things were made by him oh how 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 when the logos spoke it was created in the garden he was called a voice don't forget the Bible says the voice of God came walking in the cool of the day the voice that's the logos of God who came walking He created all things says all things were made by him without him was not anything made that was made now that's the one the Bible says the word became flesh he put on flesh that's where Jesus came from that's what became Jesus the word became Jesus there was no Jesus until he was tabernacled in human flesh he was always the word that was in the bosom of the father he never walked the shores of heaven no angel ever saw him he was always the word of the father he never put on shape he was in the bosom of the father until he became flesh hallelujah the word became flesh and dwelt among us he was the wonder of heaven and they saw him the word that made the whole world had become a man no wonder when he spoke it became whatever he said became now the Bible says this he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not mm -hmm. now can we can we look at something in, in st. John's Gospel where I'm reading to you is in st. John's Gospel chapter number one Can I see your Bible again please thank you great thank you No, when you know the word, you celebrate the word. 
Now, I want you to follow this. I'm reading to you from verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He was in the world. How? Through the prophets. The prophet spoke him. The world didn't recognize him. And so he came unto his own. And his own received him not. Look at it. He was in the world. They heard him and gave him no attention. Some of them locked the prophet up. Put him out. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. He bore witness to Egypt. The prophet spoke to Egypt. They didn't hear him. He spoke to the Assyrians. They didn't hear him. He spoke to the Babylonians. They didn't hear him. Finally, he came unto his own, with whom he had a covenant, and his own received him not. He says, but as many as received him, to them he gave the ability, the authority. To become the sons of God. Oh, hallelujah. That's verse 12. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, not of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that's so important. Thank you. That's so important. The word in our lips is still the same. See, the logos of God created all things, the Bible tells us. That's the word of God that made all things. Now, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Through profession, confession. That means, again, the word in your lips. The word in your lips. The word of God in your lips. Hello. Now, anybody, this is, um, this is October, and uh, you've got three months to the end of the year, right? Okay. In three months, not just because, I, I don't mean just the end of the year. I'm not looking at the end of the year. I'm thinking anybody in three months can have a remarkable change. If you would put the word of God in your heart and in your lips. Now somebody said, well, but I've been trying. Yeah, you've been trying. That's why you're still alive. And that's why you've come this far. You could have been worse, but that's why you've come this far. But you can do a lot better. I'm telling you, you can do a lot better. It's a choice. It's a choice. Hello? See, I, I'm... Um, why do I share these things with you? Because... 
you were born to hear them. You know what I mean by that? You were chosen to hear special words. It's not for everybody. The Bible says they are life to those that find them. Hallelujah. They are life, life to those that find them. And medicine to all their flesh. They are life to those that find them. Everybody can't find them. For example, when the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Have you, have, you, have you acted on that word? Do you know what that means? Have you walked in the realm of that word? Or are you among those saying, well, nobody knows me. I can. He says, shall men, there's a law, it's a spiritual law at work. <laughs> that law says, see, you've got to learn to function in the arena of the word of God, where the word of God is law. That's living in the kingdom of God, where the word dominates the word dictates what happens in that arena that's where i live do you understand you see bible says he has transferred us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son in whom we have our redemption do you know what that means <laughs> He says he's transferred us, literally transferred us, plucked us out of the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of the son of his love. He says we are there now. We are no longer in the darkness. We are in the kingdom of light. We are there now. Are you conscious that you are there now? Well, look at it. In that place, there is no lack. Now, we have a, there's a language we speak in that kingdom. We're talking about the fire of faith. The word in my lips. What is my response to lack? What is my response when there's no money in the house? What is my response? Do I respond like the man in the world? Who says, well, I had 5,000, it's all finished, I don't know, well, 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 you just have to manage, we just have to manage. Or am I over here where I said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall not want. Jehovah is my shepherd, I refuse to lack. Shout amen, somebody. What is your response? You know, there's, there's, a, there's so many children in the house of God, and that's not a problem. But the problem is when, the Bible says, War unto thee, O land, when thy king is a child. You know what that means? We, we've got... A lot of leaders who are still children in spiritual things. Now, when, I, when, I mean, when I'm talking about that, I, I'm not referring to uh, the PCF leader in the satellite church pastor. I'm not, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who are writing books. I'm talking about those who are, who are trying to control what happens in Christendom. There's where we got a lot of problems. But things are changing. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, take for example, um, if I said, come, if I said, hallelujah, praise God everybody, this brother was healed of cancer. Are they going to go, oh, oh, happy. Then I say, he went to the doctor, and they didn't find the cancer anywhere. Ah! They're going to clap much louder. Why? Because now the doctor satisfied him well. 
nepios. You see, a lot of times we don't know when we find ourselves walking in the darkness. We think that he is more here because the doctor said he healed. That's where we've got a lot of problems in the house of God. See, when I'm in the house of God, I'm, I'm in the church worldwide. Most of them don't know what Christianity is. They don't know what faith is. They don't know. In the Old Testament, even when the lepers were cleansed, God didn't send them to the physician to decide that they were cleansed. He sent them to the priest, not to the physician. Why did King Asa die? The Bible says because when he was sick, diseased in his feet, he resorted to the physicians and not to God. There's nothing wrong with the physicians. I'm just trying to tell you that uh, faith requires... Huh, I want you to understand this. We're talking about the fight of faith. Faith, there are two kinds of faith. One is the true faith, all right? The other one is the fake faith, all right? It's sense knowledge faith. It's the faith that depends on physical evidence. It depends on physical proof. Now, sometimes some people get here and they say, I'm going back to the doctor and I'm going to have him blow his mind. I'm going to the doctor in... I'm going for a checkup, and the doctor is not going to find that tumor in my body. Hallelujah, I'm here. The doctor will not find the tumor in my body. So he goes to the doctor, and they check him and say, Oh, it's larger than before. <laughs> His faith just goes from level five to level one. I thought I was here. I was so sure the doctor wouldn't find anything. In fact, sometimes when they show up to the doctor, the doctor checks and says, are you sure you're all right? He says, doctor, what's the problem? Are you sure you're all right? The doctor, I'm, I'm surprised you're still talking. I'm surprised you're still moving around. In fact, you have to come in for admission immediately. He says, doctor, now this guy came. He was whole when he came. He was happy when he saw the doctor. Doctor says, are you sure you're all right? Look. This thing is larger. In fact, two months and you'll be dead. Uh -huh. <laughs> you have to come to the hospital immediately. In fact, I don't think I'll let you go home. Call your wife. Call whoever. They should bring your things. <laughs> Do you know what? Right away, automatic sickness. <laughs> He'll be sick now. They put him on the bed. All others will come and meet him there. What happened? He says, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I thought I was healed. I confessed it. I don't know. I've tried. I've tried. The rest is up to God. <laughs> it's not up to God. It's up to you. You put yourself there. The Bible didn't say they that are satisfied here by doctors are here. It says with his trunks ye were here. Thank you, brother. Thank you. You understand what I'm talking about? It's so important. But we think it's more real because the doctor said it's real. Hallelujah. Fight the good fight of faith. What is the fight of faith? When cancer wants to lord it over you, you say, uh-uh. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I got the life of God in me. Every fiber of my being, every bone of my body. He says, fight the good fight. 
It's a good fight of faith. That fight of faith is when all hell has broken loose and everything looks dark. And you are still saying, I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's the fight of faith. No money, I'm not moved. You just lost your job, I'm not moved. You've tried several places for one contract or the other. They rejected you. You tried this and tried that. You called up a friend. They rejected you. I'm not moved. I'm not moved. Hallelujah. Why are you not moved? They that are founded on Mount Zion shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He says, fight the good fight of faith. He says, fight. He didn't say, cry. Okay, well, now I've not been able to give birth. I've been married six years. I've had several miscarriages. Now, all of a sudden, I get pregnant, and my goodness, it's two months now. Say, God, it's three months now. Say, God, it's four months now. And then I start some blood spotting. I say, <laughs> this, is, this is what usually happens. It's always at the fourth month. <laughs> You're already crying. Nothing has happened yet. You're just blood spotting. I know, I know, I know. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. You have destroyed your faith. Yes. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on that baby. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. It's a fight of faith. You're seeing blood. I'm not moved. I'm not moved. In the name of Jesus. You say I'm perfectly normal. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm perfectly normal. I'm perfectly normal. Then you put your arms around your body, start talking in tongues. Woo! Glory to God. He says, fight the good fight. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? He says, lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on that thing that God has given to you. Don't let it go. Hallelujah. The first thing you need in your life is to have the word of God in you. If you have the word of God in you strong, anything is possible. Anything. Then you have a different mentality, a different mindset. All right? Can I show you something quickly? Let me show you this quickly. Ho, 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 hallelujah. Rush to Book of Romans, chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Hmm. I like this. He says from verse 6. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Stop. He says, they are not all Israel 
which are of Israel. Verse 7. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they our children. In other words, even though they are all the seed of Abraham, they are not our children. Hmm. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. <laughs> that means, even though they were all children of Abraham, or they were all the seed of Abraham, they were not all called children of Abraham. He says, because in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Read verse 8. He explains. He says, that is. Uh-huh. Read it. Good. He says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. He says, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. This is a very, very important thing. You've got to understand it. The children of the flesh, he says, are not the children of God. Who are the children of the flesh? It means the children of the senses. He says there are two types of children. He says the children of the promise and the children of the senses. The children of the promise, he says, are counted for the seed. The promise is the word. Look at it. Verse 9, for this is the word of promise. You see that? This is the word of promise. So the children of the promise are the children of the word. The children of the senses. These are the children of the flesh. Go to chapter 8. Same book. He says, fight the good fight of faith. Are you hearing me? Okay. Chapter 8. I'm reading to you from verse six, 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the senses, but according to the Spirit. So the righteousness of God is fulfilled in those who walk according to the Spirit. It is not fulfilled in the lives of those who walk according to the flesh. I. Hello, are you, are you in the higher classes or are you in the junior classes? <laughs> Those in the higher classes can understand what I'm talking about now. He says, he says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh. The righteousness of God fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh but according to the spirit. Meaning, oh my goodness. Uh, Oh, the righteousness of God is fulfilled in those who walk in the Spirit. How can I legros mavis on to crowd the Hello. Hi. Okay. Let me use health as an example. Divine health is God's perfect will. Are you hearing this? Divine health is God's perfect will, which 
God wrought for us in Christ Jesus. It is the proof of his righteousness. So, for a man to have divine health, it is the righteousness of God. He has proved himself righteous. He has proved himself right. In his salvation work, the redemptive work in Christ, that a man should have divine health, perfect health, is the manifestation of the righteousness of God. God has shown himself righteous. Now, so when divine health is revealed in my body, the righteousness of God has been manifested in my life. When prosperity is revealed in my life, the righteousness of God is proved in me. He has shown himself different. He has shown that he is not the author of sickness. He is not the author of poverty. He is not the author of the sufferings of man. He has shown himself righteous. He says that the righteousness of God might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the senses, but according to the spirits. Remember the law. The law separated the Jews from the rest of the world. He said, blessed shall thou be in the country. Blessed shall thou be in the field. He said, your enemies shall come against you one way, but they shall flee before you seven ways. This is the righteousness of the law. Such that when they obeyed the law, if they went out against their enemies, they must defeat the enemies. Everything they did turned into success. This was the righteousness of the law. The law proved itself in the life of the Jew that obeyed the law to the letter. Now he says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the senses. What God wanted to do with the law, having separated them as a kingdom of priests unto himself, they were a kingdom of champions. He said, one of you shall chase a thousand. Two of you shall put ten thousand to flight. They were a nation of blessed people. Everything they did was successful. But you know what? They broke the law. And so God now said, all right. I want the righteousness of the law. You see, these men failed, not because the law failed, but because they failed. He said the law is righteous. Oh, studies in, in Romans chapter 7. He said the law is righteous. He said, but I was the problem. So now, he wants the righteousness of the law to be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the senses, but according to the Spirit. So the law, which was the word of God, is proving itself right. Proving itself right. Practicable. Result-oriented. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He says if you refuse to live according to the flesh, the righteousness of the law will be evidenced in your life. You know, somebody says, oh God, prove your word in my life. No. God is saying, prove my word in your life. He's saying, stop walking in the flesh. I, I'm, having, I'm having stomach uh, trouble. I, I need, um, I need, who, who told you? Who told you? Where did you hear it from? Satan talked to you? Who told you? Your feelings are trying to dominate you? Sin shall not have dominion over you. Hey, I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be dominated by headaches and colds and fever. He says, fight the good fight. He says, fight. He didn't say, keep quiet. He said, fight. Somebody says, let sleeping dogs lie. Don't just talk to demons. Just let everybody go. Everything will be all right. No, things will not be all right. We are a kingdom of talkers. Did you hear me? The power is in your mouth. 
That's why you have to talk. You can't keep quiet and do a general kind Christian. I don't say anything. I'm just quiet. I thank God for my life. No. Your life will go where your mouth goes. He get, listen, he didn't give you your mouth to use in eating. <laughs> and in talking to people. He gave you your mouth. That tongue is the little helm of the sheep of your life. Do you understand? Your life is going to go where your tongue goes. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter where you are now. If you're going to come out of that mess, it's going to be by your tongue. Every day you say, I know who I am. Somebody may say, well, you've been talking now for five years. I haven't seen a difference. Say, hold on, just watch. Just watch. Hallelujah. You know, how do I know that I'm going to journey to my next level? Because I'm still talking. I've been talking for years. And I'm still talking. I'm still using my mouth. I'm still talking myself on. Talking myself to the top. Somebody said, it doesn't work. Well, you're too late. It's been working for me. Listen, the apostles did it. Let's finish that quickly. Oh, 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 oh. Romans chapter 8, that's where we were. And, and I got to verse, verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who work not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Oh, for to be carnally minded, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be minded on the cancer is death. To be minded on failure is death. To be minded on fear is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Shout amen, somebody. Say, I refuse to be carnally minded. Listen, when you read in the newspapers, 20 robbers invaded the bank. Five people just died. 100 fell into the river and died. Accident claimed the lives of 50. When you read all that, fear grips your heart. <gasps> fear. And if you continue in that direction, your faith will be grow going downwards day by day. And now, even when you study the rhapsody, you don't study the scriptures along with it. <laughs> Until finally, fear dominates your life. You are now carnally minded. You start speaking a different language. Don't kill me. I'm afraid, I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid, I don't know. What, uh, you're afraid what? I'm, I'm afraid, I'm scared. <laughs> I don't know why some people like that language. They say, it's very scary. <laughs> they think it's fashionable, it's not. See, a healthy man like this say, it's very scary. <laughs> Then the little children come, Daddy, is it scary? <laughs> For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh, cannot please God. Do you remember Hebrews 11, 6? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. They that are in the flesh cannot have faith. You see that? Because they cannot please God. If they had faith, they would please God. You can't be in the flesh and have faith at the same time. Say this with me. I'm what God says I am. 
Say it again. I am what God says I am. I got the life of God in me. I got the life of God in me. I'm making progress in my life. I'm moving forward in my life. Stop. You know some people say, I haven't seen any progress in my life for a long time. In fact, I don't know what I'm going through. Oh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Stop talking like that. Because if you talk like that, you stamp it. You make it real. You have endorsed it. No progress. No. Stop saying, I haven't seen progress in my life. I look at the left, I look at the right. I can't see anywhere I'm going. No. You say, in the name of Jesus. I'm making progress. I'm making progress. Are you making progress? I'm making progress. I'm making progress. Look at this. Look at this. Look at me. See, I'm using my tongue right. My confessions of faith create realities. My confessions of success and abundance create realities. I'm making progress. I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus, I'm what God says I am. Say, watch out, world. Watch out, devil. I'm coming. Hallelujah. 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 When you are faced with situations that challenge your faith in the Word of God, there is one key thing you must do. You must fight. It's not a fight with gloves or F-16s, but it's a good fight of faith. Join Pastor Chris in this enlightening teaching series as he victoriously takes you through the steps on how to fight the good fight. So fight! Unleash your faith! That's all it takes, brother! That's all! You say, I'm a child of God, and I'm going to live the victorious life that Jesus has given to me. Ah, hey! <laughs> oh, glory! Pick up your phone and call the numbers displayed on your screen to order for this message. Or you can log on to www.christembassyonlinestore.org to place your order. in this three-volume DVD set by Pastor Chris. They include teachings on different topics that would give you insight for living the up life that the Bible has promised every Christian. Many times, a lot of Christians want to understand prayer. They want to know how to pray, to have resources. See, that there are rules for prayer. There are different kinds of prayer, and there are rules for prayer. Yes. You don't need to pray a powerful prayer. All you need to pray is a prayer to a powerful God. What do you say to a Christian who is experiencing demonic oppressions? A Christian who is experiencing oppression needs to exercise his authority. They have to know about the authority to exercise it. When we speak in tongues, we are emboldened, we are empowered. Without speaking in tongues, we cannot grow up spiritually. Can every, can every Christian speak in tongues? Get armed and ready to live victoriously. Order now for this three-volume DVD set today by calling any of the numbers now displayed on your screen or online at www.christembassyonlinestore.org. In life is the lack of wisdom. Why did God deposit all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Jesus? Why? Because of us. God's righteous ones are supposed to have a mindset, the mindset of a victor, the mindset of one who is more than a conqueror, a mindset of a success. This is the kind of wisdom that he wants to take you to. 
Maybe you haven't gotten it yet. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 11, for the value of wisdom is far above rubies. Nothing can be compared to it. Join Pastor Chris in this teaching series as he takes you through three kinds of wisdom that would surely keep you ahead always. Order for your copies today.